loans give more returns. Get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. Corruption. One must be courageous to confront and rise up against the corrupt. Sleep well. Be guided by ethics and standards for peace of mind. Refresh Sri Lanka for a civic minded society. LMD, the voice of business. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. Tonight on the forum, we're focusing on post-pandemic travel. And with us, we have Anand Yadari, the Regional Head of Customer Travel and Lifestyle for South Asia, the Middle East and Africa at Cathay Pacific. Hi, Anand, and it's very nice to have you on the show. Thank you so much, uh, Ruani. I mean, it's a pleasure to be on your show. To start things off, Anand, can you share with us your take on Sri Lanka, especially with regards to aspects such as our country's image in the region, um, our potential for tourism, and of course, our overall appeal in terms of aviation. Uh, well, look, uh, Ruani, uh, absolutely. Uh, as Cathay Pacific, we are delighted to uh, be announcing our resumption back uh, into uh, Colombo, uh, Sri Lanka, after a short gap of four years uh, since the pandemic actually uh, started. And uh, we're not new to Sri Lanka because uh, we've been present there for last uh, 30 years. In terms of what kind of factors were gone in uh, to consider resumption back at, at, uh, into Sri Lanka now, uh, actually, Sri Lanka, we all know, is a very popular destination for uh, most of our foreign travelers. Uh, especially tourism. Uh, we, we know very well in terms of the kind of uh, gorgeous natural landscape, uh, especially beaches, beautiful beaches, uh, you know, natural scenic beauty, as well as uh, the kind of uh, wildlife that Sri Lanka has to offer. A lot of tourists actually from uh, the network that we cater to, including our home market, Hong Kong, China, and uh, our Greater Bay Area, uh, is where a lot of tourists actually are looking forward to uh, a destination like Sri Lanka. Uh, so our studies actually showed that, you know, uh, there's a keen interest uh, to bring back uh, a lot of them into Sri Lanka. Uh, they are keen to visit Sri Lanka, uh, including some of the initiatives that uh, the Sri Lankan government took where, you know, uh, they have made uh, some of the countries visa free uh, for tourism. Uh, and also from an outbound point of view, when you look at uh, the kind of markets uh, that Sri Lankan travelers are traveling to, uh, be it USA or uh, be it Australia or Canada, uh, that those are the kind of markets that uh, Cathay Pacific actually serves through the network. Uh, we've seen a huge demand out of Sri Lanka uh, and hence considering both the factors, you know, where uh, both uh, inbound tourist demand as well as uh, from Sri Lanka a lot of travel uh, into Australia, US and Canada, especially from segments like uh, students, um, immigrants, uh, business travel, as well as leisure, uh, I think can, kind of gives us a lot of confidence to re, uh, you know, resume our flights back. Uh, and that's why we've now decided to bring our flights back from uh, 2nd of February uh, with three flights a week uh, between Hong Kong and uh, Colombo. And with Cathay Pacific returning to Sri Lankan skies, we will see a revival of a long-standing aviation partnership between uh, the two countries, Hong Kong and Sri Lanka. What will this renewed connectivity mean for the two countries? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, firstly, you know, uh, Cathay has been uh, present in Sri Lanka since last 30 years. So this relationship, as you rightly mentioned, is a, a long-standing one uh, between uh, Hong Kong and Sri Lanka with our direct of flights uh, since 1993 October, where, which is when we started our flights uh, way back. Uh, and now, actually, uh, since the pandemic uh, is kind of impacted aviation the most, 
uh, of course, uh, for us as Cathay, uh, we resumed most of our operations only after uh, some of the restrictions were lifted in Hong Kong as well as in China, uh, which is at the beginning of the year in 2023. And as part of our phased recovery, uh, we're now kind of slowly uh, getting back to almost 70% of our pre-COVID levels of capacity. Uh, and as part of that, uh, you know, one of our being a Hong Kong's home carrier, uh, we are uh, consider we consider ourselves as uh, being enablers uh, who are looking at connecting Hong Kong, uh, Greater Bay Area, and the Chinese mainland to rest of the world. Uh, and as part of our recovery, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in a phased manner, we are now bringing back most of our uh, destinations across network. So with Sri Lanka now coming on to our network uh, from February, uh, we are looking at connecting both uh, the countries together where uh, a lot of leisure travel between uh, China and our other home markets like Greater Bay Area and Hong Kong uh, would be you know, a huge amount of traffic that would be coming in uh, into Sri Lanka. That would also help uh, the overall Sri Lankan economy, uh, we, we believe, uh, given that tourism is one of the biggest contributor to, uh, to Sri Lanka. Uh, and, and by us bringing in our frequencies, uh, we are very confident the kind of numbers that uh, we would see with tourists coming in, uh, as well as uh, a lot of business travel uh, out of Sri Lanka. Uh, mainly to Asia. Uh, we've seen a uh, huge demand for uh, places like Japan and Korea for, from a business point of view uh, for uh, Japanese travelers. So in short, uh, we are hoping that, you know, with our flights resumption, uh, we would have, a, you know, a good amount of traffic that would be moving via Hong Kong uh, to our network across, uh, uh, across the globe. Anand, if I ask you, what is your assessment of post-pandemic travel? I mean, what are the opportunities and the challenges that you see in this segment? Well, uh, in terms of post-pandemic, uh, a lot has changed, uh, especially in terms of, uh, you know, what a traveler is today looking at. Um, uh, if I look at in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the way uh, people have now, the kind of behavioral changes that we've seen for travelers, especially when they're booking their flights. Uh, you, you look at, you know, people have now moved to the digital side. Uh, a lot of people are now booking on websites uh, as compared to going through the traditional uh, booking channels. Uh, we've also seen in terms of huge opportunities when it comes to tourism, uh, especially the niche areas. Uh, like, for example, uh, we've seen, uh, you know, a, a culinary tourism really coming up. Uh, we saw food uh, being a big part of travel consideration for, especially for a younger travel audience. Uh, and post pandemic, uh, we've seen a lot of interest in culinary tourism. Uh, similarly, adventure tourism is also picking up. Uh, we've seen trends where, uh, you know, uh, very unique adventurous outdoor activities is something uh, the younger population is looking at. Uh, they want to try something new. They want to try something uh, different. Uh, and they are looking at exploring these kind of experiences. So a lot of travel now is more experience driven uh, as compared to in the past. Uh, similarly, a lot of uh, people are now looking at taking more holidays. So some of the surveys that we conducted showed us very clearly where, you know, people are now looking at almost two international trips in a year as compared to in the past where, uh, you know, uh, very barely one international travel would happen. So uh, these are very encouraging signs coming out of the pandemic. And uh, we are very, very uh, confident uh, that uh, travel uh, will continue to be a key uh, aspect of uh, every individual's life. And, and uh, Cathay is looking at capitalizing that. And in your view, how should airlines, especially those uh, that are serving the South Asian region, how should these airlines bring about uh, innovations? to improve passenger experience? Uh, so uh, in terms of from an innovation point of view, Cathay uh, is one airline, you know, that I can assure that is always looking at trying something new, trying something different uh, to enhance our customers' experience. Uh, and that could be in various forms. Uh, it could be in terms of making sure that, you know, we are getting our 
state of the art new uh, aircrafts uh, be it uh, airbus 350s or uh, be it our new cabin products that we are bringing in into our uh, business class or into our premium economy cabins uh, which helps elevate the overall experience of our customers uh, similarly in flight dining is is another area that we continuously keep reviewing and providing opportunities where you know we don't go with the usual traditional meals but trying and offering fusions or or offering very niche uh, vegan meals and so many other opportunities so so we continuously keep looking at uh, innovative ways of enhancing the overall experience of our customers uh, and also similarly one other area that we are now diversified into is on the lifestyle space of it so uh, while cathay is always been a very legacy traditional carrier where you know people would consider cathay uh, to travel from point a to point b uh, as part of lifestyle now we are moving into a space where we want to kind of build an ecosystem for our uh, travelers uh, who can actually not just uh, be engaged with us as an airline only when they are traveling uh, on flights but also uh, can actually be engaged for non air products as well so for example if someone is a cathay member today uh, you can earn and burn miles not just while you are while you are traveling with us but we also are now building a array of uh, partners who are part of non air uh, and and are you know and you have an opportunity to actually uh, earn miles by uh, participating with our partner uh, you know or visiting our partner uh, brands uh, to give you an example you know if, if you know we have partners with dining who offer you uh, you know who are par uh, dining partners we have partners uh, in holidays uh, and and similarly we offer opportunities to our customers to even uh, participate or uh, you know look for opportunities where they can earn miles uh, when when they are spending uh, with with any banking transactions or any payment transactions so so we're looking at co-branding uh, with with credit cards and so on and so forth so uh, that's the other space that we're getting into uh, so that you know we're not just currently uh, confined to offering our customers only from a travel point a to point b point of view but also now uh, diversifying or uh, in in other areas as well it's now time to take a short break but we'll soon return to talk more about post pandemic travel display your brand message on digital screens at prime locations at prime locations the largest digital advertising network in sri lanka in sri lanka emerging media you're mobile and so are we gets me going grab the light 87 app at the apple app store or google play now 87.8 and 87.6 island wide light 87 Welcome back to the show. Tonight we're talking with Anand Dideri, the regional head of customer travel and lifestyle for South Asia, the Middle East and Africa at Cathay Pacific. You spoke of a lot of opportunities. Um, can I ask the other side of the coin what about the challenges for airlines today? I think in general globally uh, the airline is just coming out of the pandemic uh, of course uh, uh, due to the kind of pent up demand that we saw uh also meant that overall prices have been uh on on a little bit on a steep of front uh however um there are various reasons for that as well uh also it's mainly given the fact that there is a gap between supply and demand uh there is also challenges related to the supply chain uh wherein uh you know human resources are still not meeting the expected levels that we would like to especially uh you know most of the airports uh in terms of ground handlers or caterers now we still yet to kind of get the kind of uh, expertise and human resource numbers that would have been uh, required to cater to the levels that we were handling in pre pre pandemic uh similarly currently even um, the amount of i mean fuel prices are currently on at a pretty high uh so these are challenges that continue to remain uh but however uh from an airline point of view uh, we are always prepared uh, to you know make sure that we put our customers first uh and and then ensuring that you know uh, any of their experiences are not impacted with this uh so we continue to work on that front and uh, overcome these challenges over a period of time 
Anand, my next question to you is on pricing. So when it comes to fairs and prices and promotions, what factors and, and sensitivities will have the most impact on ticket prices in the coming year? Currently, I think the demand is definitely, we all agree that uh, there is a, a decent amount of demand that we're seeing in most of the markets, especially given the fact that uh, most airlines haven't even reached um, the pre-pandemic levels yet. Uh, for Cathay, I can say, uh, we, as I said earlier, we are at 70% uh, of our pre-pandemic level as a group uh, between uh, Cathay Pacific and Hong Kong Express, uh, which is our uh, low-cost uh, service uh, airline. Um, and uh, in terms of when you compare that uh, with by 2024, uh, end of 2024, we expect ourselves to be getting into 100% of what we were at pre-COVID. Um, and one of the key factors which will continue to drive pricing would be the kind of demand we see versus uh, the supply uh, that is to be uh, bridged. And the supply, as again, I mentioned earlier, uh, depends on various factors, uh, which is currently, uh, you know, the supply chain. Uh, there are uh, issues related to, you know, uh, getting spare parts, whether it is with aircraft or whether, you know, resources related to uh, crew or, or uh, various other uh, elements. So, so given these challenges, uh, currently, uh, I think, from a pricing point of view, uh, we may still, of course, we may not be uh, as high as, as, as 2023 or 2022. Uh, there would be some correction. However, uh, we expect the prices to still remain on a little higher side, given the fact that uh, there are these challenges related to supply and demand. We're almost at the end of our conversation, Anand, but I want to ask you a question that revolves around LMD's campaign, Refresh Sri Lanka, which we launched last year to encourage a, a, a mindset change and create a more civic-minded society. So in your view, uh, especially when we look at mitigating challenges concerning manpower, like attrition and turnover, like you mentioned, what does civic-mindedness look like um, for the aviation sector? So, um, no, absolutely. Uh, I think civic mindedness is such a broad topic, right? Uh, and and it covers various pillars. Uh, and, and like you said, one of them is about, um, you know, how uh, human uh, part of it, how do we ensure? So as far as our teams are concerned, uh, one thing uh, we have been, Cathay Pacific has been uh, doing is, uh, we you know, through the pandemic, uh, we've ensured uh, our team's well-being uh, is well looked after, uh, especially given the fact that, of course, we ourselves as an airline went through uh, the most difficult period uh, in two years. However, uh, there were various areas that uh, we kept uh, engaging with our teams uh, and ensured that, you know, our teams were uh, well looked after uh, and, and were engaged throughout. Uh, similarly, we also uh, are, you know, there are other aspects of uh, the civic mindedness, which which I can talk about is, uh, you know, about how do we contribute to the community uh, while we've been through going through these most difficult times, but how do we continue to contribute to the community? Uh, and one of them is, you know, uh, a lot of our uh, surplus, food surplus, is always kind of ensured that, you know, how do we make sure that we give back to the community? Uh, so we work very, very closely with uh, a lot of uh, uh, NGOs in Hong Kong, uh, wherein we, uh, you know, these charity partners like Food Angel and, and Feeding Hong Kong um, are the ones that we partner with and ensure that we, you know, donate those surplus food to them so that uh, not just our own employees that we look after, but we also look after overall community at large. Um, and similarly, uh, you know, we also are very heavily focused in terms of how do we remain a, a very sustainable airline uh, when it comes to uh, carbon offset uh, and, you know, making sure that we are, uh, you know, we are uh, well focused on achieving our overall goal, uh, which is being, uh, you know, uh, at, at getting net carbon zero uh, emission by uh, 2050. Uh, which is also IATA's goal and, and Cathay Pacific's goal. So as part of that, a lot of work has been going on. Uh, and, and overall, you know, as I said, civic mindedness is a very broad topic. Uh, 
uh, for us uh, it includes every aspect including uh, you know dni is one of them where diversity uh, and inclusiveness uh, is is one of the most important aspect of uh, of our uh, culture uh, and uh, you know being a very global airline uh, we ensure that you know uh, we make sure that all people from every uh, area are are part of uh, you know the diversification and and inclusiveness as 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 a airline before we wind up uh, i also want to talk a little bit about airports because airports play a very significant role in ensuring passenger satisfaction and of course uh, when it comes to servicing uh, carriers so how would you rate the facilities at bia at bandarnaik international airport and how could they be enhanced further uh firstly i think uh, sri lanka uh, i'm looking forward to uh, you know uh, sri lanka in 2019 actually had 1.9 million visitors coming in uh and uh, recently i was also looking at uh in september sri lanka has already crossed 1 million uh, tourists coming into sri lanka in 2023 so uh definitely uh, airport plays a very very important role um and uh, the the airport uh, the bia uh, in sri lanka in colombo is one of the good airports around uh, our region um, and i believe uh, there are opportunities which i'm sure uh, the airport and the authorities are uh, doing their due dil- diligence in terms of uh, making sure that you know how they are prepared to uh, you know receive these increasing number of arriving uh, tourists uh but otherwise in terms of infrastructure uh, uh for cathay uh, we've seen uh, working alongside uh, with the bi as as a partner uh, and also supporting them we've always seen uh, them coming up with technology we've seen we've heard about uh, you know them bringing in kiosks uh, for uh, self check in uh, and uh, similar more uh, uh, you know innovative ways uh, that they are looking at uh, bringing in so uh, i'm sure there are a lot of airports in and around the region where they can derive more inspiration from uh, and uh, will will make sure that they are gearing up for the kind of tourist flow coming into sri lanka uh, in 2024 anand it's been a, a very insightful and interesting conversation with you um but before we let you go any closing thoughts you'd like to share with our audience today thank you firstly uh, ruani for uh, giving us uh, the platform uh, and it's been a pleasure talking to you um i would just remind our uh, audience here that you know uh, cathay pacific has been in sri lanka uh, for last 30 years uh, yes we we've, we've had to pause operations uh, however uh, we are excited to be back uh, with our uh, flights uh, uh, effective second of uh, february Uh, we're going to be resuming with three flights a week uh, between uh, colombo and hong kong uh, and also we have a huge network beyond hong kong catering to uh, 80 destinations uh, so we look forward to welcoming our uh, travel uh, colombo travelers and also our cathay members from uh, colombo who have been very very patiently waiting for us to resume our operations uh so we look forward to having them on board and uh, i'm sure um, the connectivity between hong kong and uh, sri lanka will grow further over a period of time from here on we've been talking with anand yadari the regional head of customer travel and lifestyle for south asia the middle east and africa at cathay pacific anand this was very nice having you on the show thank you so much uh, rwani and uh, it's indeed a pleasure for me as well and to all our viewers thank you so much for joining us tonight until next time Take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.